I want to highlight as well why the, the Jewish acceptance of Muhammad is problematic. Oh, right. But there's yeah, no for, Jewish for, acceptance of Muhammad. Or for, though, Mal for Maimonides who say, like, because he encourages the worship of one God, why is very problematic position of Jewish people who kind of say, like, they are our cousins or friends or whatever it is. Well, they are technically our cousins. Well, Just we're very, very distant cousins. Just tell me for 10 seconds. We've got a mutual friend on Facebook. Her name is Molly. Okay. Molly Christian. She wanted me to say hello to you and for you to say hello. Okay. Can you do a quick 10 seconds? Yeah. Hello, Molly. Uh, what, what, what? God bless you, <laughs> Hello, Molly. Uh, hope you are doing well. Uh, this is Paper Boy. Um, <laughs> Have a come to the park yeah, day. definitely cool. come to the park, and it'll be nice to catch up and have a conversation. Yeah. Thank you, Molly. Oh, I like it. Come on, Josh. Hello, <laughs> JC. Yeah, it's funny. JC. Yeah. Finally, this this debate is happening now. At last. So, wait. <laughs> Josh said he's been waiting for one minute. Over a year. Okay. Over a year. All the emails, all the okay, all the okay. emails, okay. WhatsApp okay. messages. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Josh. All right, cool. So what's the topic about? Uh, <laughs> so we're going to have two discussions. Yep. So basically here we see Josh with um, Ali Dawa. They had a conversation uh, about North and World. about the prophethood of Muhammad and Jews accepting Muhammad as a prophet. So can you just give a an overview of yeah how the Jewish All right. perspective? To summarize, um, basically, Jews do not believe Muhammad's the prophet because the seal of the prophethood was with the prophet Malachi. He was the last prophet. Um, prophecy was taken from the world after his death. And uh, I mean, prophecy had been taken from the Gentiles a long time before that and in the death of Bilom um, in the book of Numbers. Um, of course, every paper boy knows this, of course. I know this. This is, this is something which is well known. And uh, these, these reasons, and of course the reasons that the Quran, of course, contradicts the Torah in various places are reasons why the Jews do not accept Muhammad as a prophet. Not that this has much relevance to any arguments or discussions I might have with Paperboy, as neither of us are Muslim. So, um, I've just got something from, it was a Jewish website, and I just want to see if you affirm what they say in terms of prophethood. So Which they say- is this? Uh, I can't remember. I just oh, got a screenshot. Fair so, but basically, says throughout history, thousands of religions have been started by individuals attempting to convince people that he or she is God's true prophet. Yes. But personal revelation is an extremely weak basis for a religion base because no one can uh, ever know if it is indeed, yes. is indeed true. Since others did not hear God speak to this person, they have to take his word for it. Yep. Even if the individual claiming personal revelation performs miracles, they do not prove he is a genuine prophet. All the miracles show, assuming they are genuine, is that he has certain powers. It has nothing to do with his claim of prophecy. Judaism's unique among all of the world's religion does not rely on claims of miracles as the basis for its religion. In fact, the Bible says that God sometimes grants the powers of miracles to charlatans in order to test Jewish lo loyalty to the Torah. Deuteronomy 13. Of the thousands of religions in human history, only Judaism bases its belief on national revelation, i.e. God speaking to the nation. If God is going to start a religion, it makes sense he'll tell everyone, not just one person. Yep. It says, Maimonides says, the Jews did not believe in Moses, our teacher, because of the miracles he performed. Whenever anyone's belief is based on seeing miracles, he has lingering doubts because it is possible the miracles were performed through magic or sorcery. Indeed. All of the miracles performed by Moses in the desert were because they were necessary and not as proof of his prophecy. What then was the basis of Jewish belief? The revelation at Mount Sinai, which we saw with our own eyes and heard with our own ears, not dependent on the testimony of others. As it says, face to face, God spoke with you. The Torah also states, God did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us who are all here alive today. So it says, concludes by saying, Judaism is not miracles. It is the personal eyewitness of every man, woman and child standing at Mount Sinai 3,300 years ago. Indeed. So would you agree or disagree Absolutely. with any of that? Absolutely, completely true. Okay, so 
in terms of so linking this to Mohammed, so even if he did perform miracles, miracles yeah, then you it would believe matter. it wouldn't matter as it says in Deuteronomy 13. Okay, because same of course with Jesus. We'll go same into with that. Paul. <laughs> so, in yeah. terms of um, you didn't want me to bring up Paul, did you? No, that's we'll go into that later <laughs> on. But let's start off with Mohammed because of course Jews because always bring that's up something we can agree on. Yes, definitely. So it's nice to get terms of agreement first. Exactly. So in terms of Muslims, they always go to Deuteronomy 18:18. 18, 18. Of course they do. And what is what you what do you hear from Muslims about this? Well, they say it's brethren of the people of Israel is therefore not the people of Israel and is therefore their brother. So they choose the uncle, um, which is Ishmael, instead of going to the brother, which would be actually Edom, Esau. But uh, they go to the uncle and say he's the brother because he's the brother of Isaac. Even though we're talking about Israel, it was Isaac's son, and then they say, well, it's got to be a prophet from there. And then they look for somebody who claims to be a prophet from Ishmael, which obviously we knew they were going to do that because that was the whole point in the first place. They're Muslims. And, and, uh, and what is it happens their, to be that his name was Muhammad. And what is the Hebrew word for brethren? Achecho. OK, so do you have your Torah on yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Achecho. if we go to Deuteronomy 18, yeah, yeah, yeah. 18. I know, I know. I, I don't understand why. I mean, I've heard Christians bring up Deuteronomy 1818 because they want to say it's Jesus. No, I've no, 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 no. This is wanting just, to try to this put is, Muhammad in there. No, this is just no, yeah, establishing that the prophet had to come from the line of Israel. Well, yes. Had to be, had I mean, to be in Israel, I mean, as Israelite. I mean, the very fact that it says your brethren, and in the very previous chapter, Deuteronomy 17, yeah. it says, in regards to the laws of kings, yeah. it says that the king shall be from your brethren and not a foreigner. Yeah. And in Judges chapter 12, verse 13, it's very clear that, um, that that a foreigner is somebody who's not from Israel. Mm. Therefore, we see that from your brethren is somebody who is not a foreigner, who is from Israel. So it's insane to say that somebody from Ishmael mm. is somebody who is from Israel. That doesn't make but any then sense. their argument is because it says brethren. Yes, but they haven't understood yeah. um, based on uh, based on looking at the places where your brethren talking to the people of Israel is used mm. um, and what that excludes okay um, it actually means they, they haven't really understood that at all so the reason why I brought it up I'll just give you a bit of a qualifier if you go to the um, Deuteronomy 18, 18 yes yes Deuteronomy 18 here we are so it says that before the word how do you say ach ach yeah, yeah it says kareb yeah, Novi okay. A prophet from your midst, from your brethren. So now the reason why I bring yeah, that up these is two because are qualifiers. that is exactly. Yeah. So if yeah, you say, if we go yeah. to uh, Deuteronomy 17:15, can you just confirm it says the same qualifiers? Ah, you're using the same argument I always make. Brilliant. We're on the same page, although these are two pages. Um, yeah, it says. Uh, Okay, so, so that's the word I'm just highlighting there. So basically, what we're seeing is the word ark can be used for brethren in general, but when it uses the qualifier, it can only specifically reference a Israelite. Yes, well, when it says so it's not exactly that, so that's not what I would say, because over here they have a different, a slightly different way of putting it in Deuteronomy 18 to Deuteronomy 17. Deuteronomy 17 says, Bekeo in the midst of your brethren. Deuteronomy 18 says, Bekeo Me'achecho, in your midst, yeah. from your brethren. Yeah. So we take that as actually two qualifiers over there, yeah. okay, that they are both exclusionary words, okay, that God has added to there, yeah. Moses and added there in order to exclude certain things. So yes. the Kirbacha from your midst is a is a qualifier in terms of location. Mm. So there it now excludes prophecy from being able to start outside of the land of Israel from once you go in. Because of course this entire passage is talk is uh, starting from verse 14 is when you come into the land. Mm. Right? Because that's where the paragraph begins. Um, <clears throat> and um, the uh, the, 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 and from your brethren is a is a qualifier in terms of the type of people that they have to come from. Yeah. And I would argue that the the, the, the easiest way to show that has to be Israelites yeah. is by using, as you said, Deuteronomy seventeen fifteen, yeah. and uh, combined with Judges twelve thirteen. So, whilst I would agree with you in terms of the amongst your brethren, but because the argument is used that it uses brethren and it can be used for anyone. 
when we use the qualifiers together, we will never find a passage where it uses those together to refer to someone other than. So that's why that's in, in terms it solidifies it's true, the point. It's true, but I think that when... Uh, yeah, yeah, what you're saying does carry some that does does carry some weight. But what a Muslim could very easily say in response is say, "Well, over here it says in your midst from your brethren. Over there it says in the midst of your brethren." And so over there they can say, "Well, it had to be an Israelite because because it used it in that way and it didn't use it in this way over here." What I'm saying, I think, is a slightly better argument, mm -hmm. not be um, just purely because once we have established from. Deuteronomy 17, and, yeah. and also, in fact, I believe in Deuteronomy 23 or 24, it talks yeah. about the laws of usury, mm. where it says, your brethren, not a foreigner, okay, and we know Judges 12, 13, where a foreigner is somebody who's not from Israel, so therefore, um, you're looking up Judges 12, 13, aren't you? No, 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 um, I'll just read out and, in Deuteronomy uh, <laughs> so people can actually um, um, understand. All right, then. Um, can now see from there that, um, that, that no, when Moses says, from your brethren, he's talking about the Israelite people. I would also add another argument that I thought of, which also, it's a bit less than either of the arguments that, have, that, I, uh, that you and myself have said so far, but which I think also carries some weight, which is <coughs> that, of course, the Muslims will always point us to um, the verse that says that the Edomite is our brother. Yes. Um, but so, 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 so my answer to that is that just before that, mm. with regards to Moab and Ammon, who were the sons of Lot, Okay, who came from Abraham's brother, Haran, um, are not called our brethren, and instead they have something completely different. So what, we, what I would say to the, another thing to be able to say to the Muslims then, is to say that, yes, Edom is our brother, okay, because that's the brother of Israel, but when you look at the great, great uncle, okay, so when you look at the great uncle, Haran, his descendants, Moab and Ammon, are not considered our brethren. So you have no proof, therefore, to include Ishmael, who's the uncle, um, as brethren, and we see that Edom is included and Moab and Ammon are excluded. Well, and I'll just read out the text. So here it says, I will raise up them a prophet from amongst their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command. So again, we just see here the word Kareb and Arch. Yeah together and if we go to Deuteronomy 17 15 it says thou shalt in any wise set him a king over thee whom the Lord thy God shall choose from one one from among thy brethren shalt thou set king so we see again Caleb and Arch together in the same structure so the thing for example with Muslims if you talk about the Quran they'll say well you need to learn Arabic and this is how we interpret it but then when it comes to the Hebrew Bible they seem to become the expert on the Hebrew Bible yes. and teaching Jews how to understand the Hebrew language but when we actually look at the contract of that sentence we'll never see it in conjunction to refer to someone who's not a prophet of course the Christians uh, Israelite. of course the Christians would never make such an argument from language because they can't speak Greek <laughs> well we'll get onto that they can't speak Koine Greek a which is later a lot on. of a lot of fun when you talk about um, what word was it? Um, um, Parthenos, or what was it? Oh, Parthenos, the virgin. <laughs> yeah, no, yes. We'll get onto that. Genesis 33. In we'll the get. Septuagint. No, that's not Genesis. That's, yeah, I, um, I know, Isaiah, Isaiah. 7, 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Parthenos is also used in Genesis 33 to refer to Dina after she was, after she was raped. Okay, well. Which, we'll uh, it's just we'll, an argument I'd love to hear how a missionary like yourself would we'll, uh, we'll, answer. We'll, when we have our next convert, <laughs> we'll have a second part of this as well, going on to the Messiah and his qualifications. Oh, yes, absolutely. So, and also, so the thing is, according to Maimonides, what did he say about the Jew, um, Muslim people, about how you should perceive them? Well, he said that uh, the Nazarene and the Ishmaelites, of course, talking about Jesus and Muhammad, um, were uh, um, have uh, were sent to this world um, in order that they should um, fill the world with knowledge of God and the Messiah. Yeah. So that when the Messiah comes, people will already have this concept. Okay. And indeed, we see throughout the world, whether we look at people like yourself, Christians, or people like Ali Dawa, Muslims, mm. they they know of a concept of Messiah. They have some sort of concept of monotheism, even if by Christians it's a little bit diluted, which is an argument we've had before. Um, um, the, uh, th th this is something which is a very, a very positive thing. Um, Muslims and Christians have gone around the world okay. spreading at least some sort of monotheism, some sort of concept of Messiah, and bringing pagans out of 
full paganism into okay. so something which is the overall reason, positive. The reason why I bring up Maimonides and his opinion is because I personally feel he's sold the Jewish race down the river. And I read some... The some, Jewish race? They're not a race. Well, the Jewish people, I should say. There so I will give up, so I'll give you some Islamic texts and see what you think about this on Jewish people. So it says... You don't need to read me things that the Quran... I, look, yeah, but, I, I've, I've, I've watched David's just, Woods videos I, I just, just as want, much as I you have, I want to get your I'm opinion sure. on this. Okay. So <laughs> this is from uh, Sahih Muslim, which is yeah. one of the authentic yes, Jewish I texts. Know. And it no, says... It's not Jewish, it's Muslim. It's one of sorry, the Sorry, Muslim talks. Yeah, yeah. I know, I've, I've, I've heard this from David Woods. You don't yeah, but let me, me. I just want to get your opinion. You can all watch what, David's words. Okay, He's very good. He's got a lovely voice. What am I going to say to you? What hadith am I going to read to you? Tell me something about the Jews being accursed or something like that. No. So it says, the last hour would not come unless Muslims will fight against oh, the Jews one, yeah. and the Muslims will the kill them will, until the Jews will hide yeah, themselves behind, behind the stone or a tree yeah, and, and the, the stone, stone or a tree would say, say Muslim, Muslim here's a Jew, come and kill him. Yeah. There is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. Yeah. Like what? Yeah, Joanne Batten said that on the BBC. It didn't go down so well. Sorry, let me just finish but, it. Uh, that was, but the, that was funny. The, <laughs> The tree Gerard will not say it for the tree is of the Jews. Yeah, yeah. Now, I know, I know. wouldn't you see this as a problematic thing? Because of it's problematic. Mar Marmonides is saying, well, the Jews, um, the Muslims are spreading monotheism and the knowledge of Messiah, God, God to yeah. the, ge um, the Gentiles to and the pagans. Yes. But then when we look in their text, this same person is also that, saying, yeah, I mean, you can say that about Paul as well. Look, what? Look, I don't like mm. what Muslims have to say about Jews. Yes. And I don't like what the early church fathers and Paul and whatever had to say about the Jews. Mm. But I can't, de and I can't, I'm not going to deny, I'm not going to stand here and deny all the hundreds of thousands, if not more, yes. Jews who have been slaughtered at the hands of Christians and Jews, and, sorry, Christians and Muslims in the name of their religions. Mm. I'm also not going to deny that they have done overall to the pagan world a mm. world of good. Okay. Now, so, so then, it, as, can, can, now of course, this has caused a lot of bloodshed and a lot of tears for the Jews, but uh, the the, the, uh, the 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 fact that Maimonides is not look, did, Maimonides, did, Maimonides did, was driven out of Spain by the Almohads. He was driven out of Spain mm, to North Africa mm, by radical Muslims. Okay, by Muslims who followed these texts. Okay, that, that's true. And, and Maimonides had to write letters dealing with forced conversions of Jews in Yemen and Morocco. So right? the he thing, had to deal with the thing, thing is, because but, when you had your conversation Maimonides with Maimonides was never going to was never going to defend Muslims' treatment but, of Jews but, or Muslims' ideas about but Jews. But when you had your but conversation about with Ali monotheism, but monotheism, they've done a, a world of good. So when you had your conversation with Ali Dawa, because that's what I was listening, because you said like Balam was a false prophet. No, it wasn't a false prophet. He said it was a false prophet. I said. It. I said it was a true prophet. Okay, so in terms of Muhammad, so would you see in, because you said, I believe that prophets can come to different people yeah. with a message. Not so anymore, then, they can't, they so, could. The, so then if he was a prophet, where is he getting his message from? God. So if he's getting his message from God, this same God said the Jews will be exterminated in the, le in the last hour. Wait, who, Muhammad? Yeah. No, Muhammad is not, Muhammad is not a true prophet. So he didn't receive any inspiration? Exactly. Is that, oh, that's what you believe? Yes, okay. obviously. Prophecy had already stopped. I said that at the beginning. Okay. Prophecy was taken away from the Gentiles at the death of Bilam and taken away from, from the world at the okay. death of Malachi. This is something okay. I said right at the beginning of this video. So, no, that's fine. So also, because we have a Muslim audience that reads things, and I just wanted to oh, read, you, read you some stories about Jewish history, about some of the prophets, and see whether you've heard these stories within uh, is like, this going to be about the war with the uh, with the Banu Quraysh or no 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 no, called, no 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 no? Or no is this about are, the Jewish woman who poisoned Muhammad? No, that's these are time from the times of Moses. Of oh, the times of Moses. Yes. Oh. So let me just find the passage. Uh, by the way, I would recommend so, David Wood's videos. They're so very this fun. is the story of the heifer, and it's in the Quran, <laughs> chapter four, and it says. Oh yeah, the yellow. The ye yes. So yeah. it's. I'll just read it out and then you can tell me about the Jewish perspective of this story. Yeah. And remember when Musa said to his people, Verily Allah commands you that you slaughter a cow. They said, Do you make fun of us? He said, I take Allah's refuge from being amongst Al Jahilum, the ignorant of the or the foolish. They said, Call upon your Lord for us that he may make plain to us what is. He said, 
He says, verily, it is a cow neither too old nor too young, but it is between the two conditions. So do what you are commanded. They said, call upon your Lord for us to make plain to us its colour. He said, he says, it is a yellow cow, bright in its colour, pleasing the beholders. They said, call upon your Lord for us to make plain to us what it is. Verily, to us all cows are alike, and surely if Allah wills, we will be guided. He, Musa said, he says it is a cow neither trained to tilt the soil nor water, the field sound having no other colour except bright yellow. They said, now you have brought the truth. So they slaughtered it, though they were near to not doing it. And remember when you killed a man and fell into dispute amongst yourselves as to the crime. But Allah brought forth which you were hiding. So he said, strike him, the dead man, with a piece of the cow. Thus Allah brings the dead to the life and shows you his ayah okay. which has proved evidences so that you may understand so from the jewish perspective can you tell us about this yellow cow and a man that was brought back to life by being hit by a piece of this cow well i don't know any, anything about a person who was brought back to life by by a piece of any cow okay the the law of the 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 pola aduma as it's as it's called in hebrew uh, which actually means red cow but um, there was a bit of maybe a bit of mistranslation here and there ended up becoming yellow by the Muslims, I don't know. Um, and uh, this was a cow that was used for the purification of people who needed to bring um, sacrifices to the temple but were, but were spiritually impure because of closeness to dead bodies. Um, because there are various different levels of impurity. The highest form of impurity is what's called to mace which is impurity um, from being too close to a dead body. And there's lots of laws all about that, um, which you can have a look in the, in the Mishnah, in, the, in the, the order that deals with impurity, with purities and impurities called Seder Tohoros, the sixth of the orders of the Mishnah. Um, there's lots and lots of laws about this. But to me, laws uh, um, impurity with a dead body is the highest of the impurities, and the only way to rid yourself of that impurity to become pure from to me, mace, is um, to have the uh, service of the red cow, which is described in detail in uh, Numbers, I forget which chamber, or which chapter. Um, it's it's a, 19. The, chapter 19, thank you. Uh, thank you, Matthew. Um, in Numbers chapter 19, and uh, you can read there, and also Tractate Para in the sixth order of the Mishnah gives more explanation of these laws and more details, but uh, there you go. That's uh, that's really how it works. Okay, so there was no recollection of this specific event then. So it seems like a, a historical event that seems to be inserted into the into indeed, the Quran. Indeed, I okay. remember reading about this when I was trying to get through Al Bakr, but then I got bored. Okay, so <laughs> this is what the reason why I brought this up is because many times Muslims appeal to the Jewish uh, Jewish people, but then we, yeah, we but look like at the Christians do, like you know, we look at like story, like we look at stories within the Quran but no one seems to have a recollection of them apart from Allah yes. so it would seem very strange that Indeed. like as Christians we accept all the stories in the Old Testament and we don't add to it or subtract to it but then the Muslims souls, 70 souls <laughs> who's then, counting anyway <laughs> then we see like with, with Muslims <laughs> so, I just sorry. love to buy you don't I? It's, it's a lot of fun from where I'm standing because I disagree with Christians and Muslims yeah, we'll get onto the Christian part, but of course, all yeah. I wanted to do is just start off with like the Islamic <laughs> understanding of the scripture and why Muhammad can't be a true prophet or why the uh, Quran is an error. And I'll, I'll finish with this last hadith, which is talking about um, Prophet Moses. And I want to hear your understanding on this from a Jewish perspective. So this is in Jamil al termidi it's rated as has Sahih. So it says, I narrated Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, Verily Musa, peace be upon him, was a shy and modest man who would never show anything of his skin out of modesty. Some of the children of Israel annoyed him by saying, He only keeps himself covered because of some defect in his skin, either leprosy or a scrotal hernia or some other defect. Allah the mighty and sublime wanted to free Musa from what they were saying ab about him. One day Musa, peace be be upon him was alone he took off his garment and put it on a rock then he took a bath when he had finished he turned back to pick up his garment but the rock moved away taking his garment with it 
Musa picked up his staff and chased the rock, saying, My garment, oh you rock, my garment, oh you rock. Until he reached the group of the children of Israel, who saw him naked and discovered that he was best of those whom Allah had created. He said, the rock stood still. He took his garment and put it on. He started striking the rock with his staff and by Allah, the marks of that beating were left on the rock three, four or five. This is what is referred to in the ayah. O you who believe, be not like those who annoyed Musa, but Allah freed him from what they had alleged and he was honorable before Allah. So can you tell me like the Jewish what I, what I thought about that? And I thought, well, that's a story I've never heard before. Um, and uh, I also thought, isn't it lovely that Pave Boys stopped trying to missionize me? That, uh, no, well, that's he, coming he's, next. He's just, in, he's just interested in talking about his beef with the Dawah team. Um, but uh, I, d I mean, you should speak to the Dawah team. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure they'd love to hear it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, not Ali Dawah. He will just run away like with Bob last week. So you don't but, believe? Uh, so you don't believe in stones stealing prophets' clothes? No. Okay. And I also don't believe in in uh, in fruitless discussions about about other religions who have no representatives here to defend themselves even if I do believe that they are a bunch of uh, absolute nonsense. Okay, so <laughs> the reason why I wanted to establish this is because when we look point through... Point scoring. No, it's not point scoring, but basically I want to go through <laughs> Islamic text and see how reliable it is or credible it is with Jewish, Jewish sources. Because when I argue from a Christian perspective, I will use the Tanakh. I will also look at some of the things your rabbis have said, which, we, which I've done before. So I'm not bringing things that no one has, hasn't heard of. Even the concept of the Messiah will then go to text to say, have rabbis affirmed these sort of things before? Yes or no? And what we will find is there's more of a consistency in the Christian theology than we see with Islamic text. Because even when we speak to Muslims about who is the Messiah or what is the Messiah, they never have an answer. They don't know what it is. Ask a Christian what is the Messiah, they will have an understanding of what the concept of the Messiah is. Yes. So, on that note, we can obviously go into the, um, uh, the topic of the Messiah. Ooh. So, so in right, the that, that's the end of the introduction. Now we get into the uh, <laughs> now we get so, into the meat of it. Ooh.